Hi, Mr. T here. <clears throat> In this video, I'm going to look at echolocation, specifically how toothed whales produce and detect sound. And in this case, we're going to look specifically at a bottlenose dolphin. So you can see here, here's a, a, a picture of a dolphin on the left. And on the right here at the bottom is a picture of a, um, I guess, a cutaway of a dolphin and, and the anatomy or the inside of its head. Now, what I'm going to do is, as a simplified diagram of this part here, the melon, the drawer, the jaw, sorry, the phonic lips, and the inner ear or the auditory bulla. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, go on to the next slide here. So here is uh, a diagram of the lower jaw. So this is the left-hand side of the jaw and the right hands. And at the back of the jaw bone, you've got this uh, detection area. We call it the inner ear. This is where the sound will eventually go to before it's sent to the brain. And this is called the auditory bulla or auditory bulle, if you're talking about the two of them. So one on the left and one on the right. So this is like, it's, it's similar to our inner ear. It collects the sound and it sends it to the brain so that the dolphin can hear something. So this is the jaw and the jaw takes, uh, has a process in collecting and passing on the sound to the ear. So on top of this, on top of this jaw is this big uh, fatty filled, um, what would I say, bowl, bowl uh, circular container here that's called the melon. So it, it sits on top of the jaw and it's in front of the dolphin. So if we go back just to here, it's this point here on the dolphin, right? So we've got this big fatty sack here and it's called the melon. Now that the melon has a role in uh, producing the sound. Now what happens here is behind the melon we have these two things called the phonic lips, sometimes called the monkey lips. Now basically if you think of a dolphin, um, it has lungs just like a human and when it goes to breathe it actually the air from its lungs gets pushed out through its lungs up through the back of its head to its blowhole that is about here above the phonic lips. Now on the way to the blowhole, the air can go through these phonic lips. Now they're like um, the reeds in a clarinet or the end of a trumpet. They vibrate very quickly and they make high-pitched ultrasonic sound. Okay, so the, so the dolphins can make this very high-pitched clicking sound with these phonic lips. So these phonic lips produce sound now they produce it in the uh, nasal passage, passage or the ear passage behind the melon here on the way to the blowhole. When they do that, the blowhole is shut. They push air through these phonic lips. They make it vibrate and it makes a sound like a musical instrument, but higher. Now when that sound is produced, it goes out in all directions. So notice here these waves are going out to the top. They're going to the bottom. These ones are going straight. However, when they hit the boundary of this melon, okay, so they hit the melon boundary here and they bend, they refract, okay? So you can see what's happening here is the sound wave is refracting, it's changing direction at this boundary, it then changes direction at the other boundary. Now the reason it changes direction is the same reason that light changes direction when it goes into a lens. The light here is traveling faster in this medium before it gets to the melon. When it gets into the melon, it travels slower. So it bends towards the normal. And again, when it leaves the melon, it bends away from the normal. So this lens action of the melon causes the sound waves that are produced to come out in one focused pulse, like a searchlight or a, a, very, a, a torch with a very bright light that has a focused beam with a focused sound beam that you can use like a spotlight to find out uh, or to uh, pinpoint where a fish is. Okay, so it's the sound is produced by the phonic lips. It goes out in many directions, it refracts, refracts at the edge of the melon, and it refracts because the density of the, the liquid inside the melon uh, causes the sound to travel slower 
which means it refracts towards the normal. When it gets the other side, it causes the sound to travel faster, and it goes out, refracts away from the normal. And in the end, what happens is it produces these straight parallel sound uh, wavefronts. Now, interestingly, uh, a dolphin can actually slightly change the shape of this depending on the frequency of the sound it produces. But I'm not going to go over that at the moment. So this is how sound is produced. Now, when a dolphin wants to hear, here's a cutaway of one side of the jaw. This is either the lower jaw here. This is either the left or the right. Now, the lower jaw is made of two parts. It has this high density. Here it is here. This high density bone on the outside. And it has this fatty tissue on the inside that is a low density. Now, the high density bone, the uh, sound waves travel very fast through the high density bone. And the fatty tissue, the sound waves travel slow. Now, this is important because it's going to um, affect whether total internal reflection can occur. And a total internal reflection is vital for the dolphin to hear the very faint uh, pulses that reflect back off its prey, off the fish that it's detected. So what happens is a reflected ray comes back, an incident ray, and it hits the edge of the jaw. Now, the first thing it does, of course, it's going to refract a wee bit when it hits the jaw, and then it refracts again, and it goes through this fatty tissue. Now, remember, the fatty tissue here, we talked about, uh, so the fatty tissue has a lower density, but the waves are going um, slow in this lower density fatty tissue. Okay, sound waves kind of act opposite to light waves in that way. So it goes slow in the fatty tissue, but when it hits this boundary here into the faster moving um, bone tissue, which is uh, have, has a high density, when it hits that boundary, mm -hmm. because it's going from a slow velocity to a high velocity, it has the potential to get total internal reflection. And if this angle that it hits is larger to the normal than the critical angle, sorry, if it's larger than the critical angle, that's the angle from this ray to the normal, it will totally reflect or totally internally reflect, okay? And it will continue to totally internally reflect and it will go all the way up the, through inside this fatty tissue, bouncing off the insides of the bone until it gets to the auditory bulla, the inner ear, and it passes on to the brain. So, what essentially happens is it can pick up any sound along its jaw and make sure that it travels all the way to its ear. And it can pick up very faint um, pulses of sound on its jawbone and they all go to the ear. They get transported by, it's like a big antennae to collect sound that gets taken right to the end piece of the, of the ear. So you, you, it, it's sticking out the, um, I guess, in the water, able to detect lots of different pulses, whereas if you just had this ear here, it would only get the uh, the waves that were going directly to the ear. Well, this will collect all the waves that might touch the jawbone. So here's a, another couple of examples. So the first one here is here's an incident sound wave. It can like it can hit the jaw halfway down. It doesn't have to hit on the end, and it's still going to refract. Okay, it's still going to refract here, it's going to refract again, and once it gets inside the slow moving velocity, the wave is moving slowly here, and it meets the boundary where it's going to move fast on the other side, its angle here must, in this case, it's again bigger than the critical angle, so it will keep reflecting, and none of the sound will refract through, so it will keep all of the sound and take it straight to the ear. Another, just a, another example here. It can go at a shallower angle. It will do the same thing again. Okay, and it's just going to internally reflect and go to the ear. So it's, it basically collects all the sound around and takes it straight towards the inner ear. Okay, so the, the point that the dolphin does this is to detect where a fish is. So imagine in this case, it's sent out a pulse from its melon. So one of those pulses that we looked at earlier um, and it's it's using that pulse from the melon 
okay, like a spotlight. So like a spotlight, you've got a spotlight and you're searching around the ocean and then suddenly you uh, you get a detection. So you send out a pulse and you get this detection back. Now the dolphin is moving its head as it's doing the detecting. Now when at this instant it gets a, ref a reflection back off this fish and it lands on this left-hand side, then the left hand in the ear gets the message, but the right hand doesn't. The dolphin knows that the fish is orientated towards the left. Now, it's only this uh, detection of sound only works well if it's within the 20 degrees on this side and the 20 degrees on the other side. So it knows it's on the left and up the front. Okay, now if it had one on the other side, on the right, of course, it would hear the sound in the right bula here, okay, auditory bula. Now, if the fish is directly in the middle, what's going to happen is this pulse is going to hit the front of these, and a wee bit's going to travel up this one, and a wee bit's going to travel up this one, so it will get an equal signal on both, uh, in both inner ear pieces. Right, and then that will go back to its brain and will say, "Ah, oh, right, the fish is, fish is straight in front," and the dolphin will keep up, keep sending out pulses to the fish in front, and will get um, signals back to it, and it will be able to gradually get closer and then catch the fish. And the dolphin really can't see underwater much more than about ten meters, so it's very important that it uses this sound detection, this echolocation, to find its prey, so that it can catch them. Okay, I hope this video has been helpful to clarify some points about how dolphins produce sound and how they collect sound and use it to catch its prey. Thanks for listening.